What's up, guys? This is episode two of Even Score. Got my boy Giovanni with me today. What's up? The What's boy, up? The boy. How are you? Pretty good, bro. What's new? Dude, I am probably like the most dialed in I've been in like so long. So like, I don't know. This is like a good time for me to be able to like be in front of the camera. I'm not really in front of the camera a whole lot, so I'm excited. What, what's uh What's new on the schedule? What's new on the agenda? A lot of politics right now. Not like world politics, but like dwelling a lot more into business. So like, uh, just getting that in in a in a space where it's like, you know, you're dealing with a lot more negotiation and you're dealing with a lot more like. I don't know, social warfare, I guess getting used to that is definitely something that's been like on the forefront of like a lot of what I do now. Uh, you know, there's different projects going on here and there, but at the end of the day, just maintaining my own kind of flow, workflow, home life, like separating work life from home has been always really difficult for me, but we're, we're finding that medium. So yeah, like, yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah. I feel like for a long time I was, it was like struggling, separating my, my, my like actual like personal life for my work because i was just so like consumed by shoots and making money and like all right like i gotta do this like i can't like like there's no time to like have fun and whatnot but now i'm the same way like now i'm like all right like i have to make like a day or two out of my week to do something that i want to do like like say like we go to like you know breakfast or dinner or whatever it is like i i, I accidentally like i can give myself like oh, an hour or two to like chill out and be a person rather than like yeah. all right, like i'm a business person for you know seven days of the week like it's so much easier but didn't you just do a shoot with uh, Ray? You did a did a uh, producer shoot? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm really good. Shout out to Ray, dude. I fucking love Ray. He's done so much for me, and, like, I don't know, we just get along so well. I was Actually, I was just over his house last night. Uh, we were hanging out in the studio and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, so we, like, I had a shoot down in Manahawkin a little bit earlier in the day, and then I had, like, an open day for the rest of the evening, so I was like, hey, Ray, why don't I stop by the house and we'll just get some portraits real quick? Because for as long as I've known him, have never done an actual shoot with him, which is really weird to think yeah, about, but yeah. sometimes it never comes about. But, you know, we finally made that happen, which is nice. Yeah, I like the the kitchen photos where you had the flash. Did you have an external flash or you were using like on the, on the camera? So we, so I was using a speed flash to backlight and then I was using a uh, like a studio light on the uh, you're like, using the alien b or yeah yeah, 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 yeah the yeah. alien b yeah, yeah. that's fire no nah, no nah, it, it came out pretty nice i think the the direction i want to head towards is definitely you know within prints it's within editorial kind of things uh so that was like my first kind of like crack at like you know if we were doing like an architectural digest kind of like aesthetic you know like that's definitely something i i want to see myself like do a lot more of like an editorial shoot like at, like, a, like a celebrity's home like like that stuff is like the coolest thing because it's so personable and like obviously like they're more comfortable at their house and like you can like you know pose them how you how you want and they're like all right cool like like they're in like their own domain that can be like more comfortable like with you and how the posing goes and the lighting and whatnot but um yeah i think that's i, I can definitely see you doing that like being an editorial photographer and like being obviously a concert photographer because you're amazing at that shit but thank you um yeah bro like like you've been like killing that shit but how was um how was like the first experience that you had when you had like a you know like a high profile celebrity when you actually finally shot them you got the photos you edited them you're like were you like oh my god this is crazy or were you like all right like i, I know i can do this like so I would say it, it was definitely very like slow growing. I would say like my favorite artist where I shot and I was like, wow, like we need to make sure this is like, you know, like my S tier work. Like we're going to spend like, you know, realistically, I only had uh, like 13 hours to edit the photos because it was for a club. Uh, but I shot g -E -Z for Somewhere Nowhere. And, uh, you know, that was like, the first time I shot someone where it was like, I knew that person had like a, a pretty significant impact on my life. And I know it's weird to say that like, oh, g -E -Z like had that big of an impact. But back when I was in like eighth grade uh, and I lived in Connecticut still, you know, g -E -Z, that was like, uh, like 2016, 2015 era. So it was like Tumblr Girls was really big. Yeah, and like, so good. you know, like, delicious. believe it or not, at one point or another, g -E -Z was like really, really on his shit. And I had his, like, I'm not saying he's not big anymore. Um, but he definitely inspired me in terms of like, you know, uh, how I wanted to style myself, like how I wanted to carry myself and stuff like that. So it was like being able to shoot him and meet him and talk to him. Um, and I also, I gifted him a camera as well. That's insane. Yeah, That's cool. because he, it turns out he has picked up his camera after his mom had passed and she was a photographer. Uh, she used to make prints and stuff like that. So like when I met him, I had my Polaroid camera on me and I gifted it to him and stuff. That's awesome. But I would say that was the first time where I was like, all right, like these photos mean so much more to me 
because I know a much younger version of myself is like, how the how the fuck did we even get here? Yeah, yeah. So, so like, obviously you shop for so many people. Like, do you have like a, a like a you know a, I guess a profile a celebrity that you really really want to shoot for, or do you like you kind of like already hit that mark? Like you already shot for like obviously Jaden Smith and like whoever else. Like, is there someone that you really really want to shoot for you haven't shot for yet? Oh, dude. Of course. So I would say number one right now. Well, honestly, like overall, would definitely be ASAP Rocky. You know, just because of the influence he's had over, you know, just pretty much everything. Like, mm-hmm. like I wouldn't be wearing jewelry right, like jewelry right now if yeah. it wasn't for ASAP Rocky. You know, so, uh, but all the things that he's done and like especially the music that he's put out, like ASAP Rocky was my intro to rap. Mm-hmm. Like at Long Live ASAP and uh, like just those albums that came out in, like 2015. Yeah. That was my first introduction to rap. Yeah. I never like really listened to rap before that. Um, and because just everything that, you know, he encompasses in general, like I would definitely, you know, he's definitely the grail kind of like person I would like to shoot photos of. Other than that, I think Lil Yachty would be really sick. Yeah, definitely. Um, or Drake, come on. <laughs> oh yeah. Drake I mean, of like course, of course, Drake, of course, Drake. Yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's all about how everything like comes about. Um, you know, with some portraits, there's always just like a time and place, you know, so I never wanted to be like a paparazzi photographer or something like that. You know what I'm saying? If it's not, if it's not, if it doesn't feel right to take the photo, it's not going to be taken, you know? And like, just because like, let's say I run into ASAP Rocky here and there, I'm not going to pester him and be like, oh, can I shoot your portrait? Yeah. Like, like like bury him with like pressure. It's like, it's annoying. And like, it's almost embarrassing when you do that too. And you're like, you're like, dude, I need a picture. Can I get a picture right now? Like, like, let's post up. Like, no, like it has to be like natural. If it's natural and the post, like, like a candid photo is so much more like, I guess, like, memorable and, like, you know, valuable than, like, a art girl pose on the wall. Like, do you want to really do concert photography? Because I think, like, you can get really good in the food space, too. Like, you've been shooting for the restaurant and stuff and, like, the product photos and stuff. I I think you can really dominate that, too. So I started shooting concerts not necessarily because it was, like, what I wanted to do. So I, like, I had to sit down and be like, all right, so I was shooting a ton of, like, not studio things, but a lot of portraits of different people and stuff like that, right, before I was shooting any artists. And, you know, the thing was on my Instagram, I was using my personal Instagram. So I would post a picture of myself. It would get like a few hundred likes. And then I would post my photography. It would get like 50, you know? So I was like, all right, how can I get people more engaged in terms of, you know, people like not respecting the fact that I want to become a photographer, but making that more of like my persona uh, and make people take it serious. So in studying the game, like you have like Gunnar Stahl, you have Garrett Bruce, uh, you know, big mentor of mine, Walter Brady, you know, a lot of the work that I found, like from them, like, yes, they do great editorial stuff. Uh, but the intro to it was their concert photography, you know, so I kind of realized like, all right, concert photography is not only a way to make you a better photographer, but it'll, um, it'll help network one and two, it'll help get more eyes on your work. So when people start following you because you're shooting all these high profile people, then that brings them to your page and then they'll be like, all right, well, he can actually do this. He can do this and do that. Yeah, like what else can yeah. you do? Yeah. Yeah, so that was that's definitely just been the blueprint. So back in like 2022, I started shooting concerts like m- like significantly more. Uh, I started going to these shows up in Clifton, New Jersey, and I shot for like Autumn, uh, Slump Sixes. Uh, I think I shot, I shot DC The Dawn as well. You know, but, and that was just like, paying for a ticket to go to the show and hopefully they, they would let me bring my camera and stuff like that. And thankfully like the shows were small enough to the point where like they did let me bring my camera. Uh, so it was like the first two times I would go and then I would pay for my ticket. Second, the next two times I would go, uh, I would be put on the guest list, you know, cause I was able to connect with the touring agency and whatnot. And then after that, it's like, all right, now you're welcome on stage and now you get like full access, mm-hmm. you know? So just that being able to network and and see how the actual industry works and how people are, you know, because at the end of the day, like not everyone just does this for fun. You know, it is a business and stuff like that. So you get to learn how to navigate the the social warfare, yeah. I guess, I guess you can call it, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, it's really, it is about like who you know too. Like if you don't like, if you don't have a, a network of people or like if you're not making connections at the places you're going to, you're not going to, you know, be able to achieve or like you know, experience like the 
things that you should be experiencing. Because, like, if I didn't know, like, half the people I know, like, I wouldn't get, like, really any of these jobs. Like, like half the pictures that are hung up right now, like, I wouldn't, if I didn't, like, make friends with somebody or if I didn't, like, do good at a shoot or whatever, like, like you have to actually, like, it's all about who you know. It's not about, like, what you're doing or whatever it is. Like, you are in the right place at the right time and then you'll be, you know, presented the opportunity to, like, seize the moment. So, I think that's awesome. Like, and, and you're obviously in, like, a, a cool crowd. Like, it's, like, you're you're young, like. Like, if you're, like, 30, 40 people, like, eh, this dude's weird. Like, let's not let him on stage or whatever. But, like, you're, like, the perfect moment. Like, you're doing the thing. Like, it's just, it's just dope. I think it's awesome. But yeah. I think it's also crazy. Like, like we're, we're shooting with these, like, really expensive cameras. And, like, they're trying to offer, like, no money, like, for a job. And I'm like, dude, like, this camera's, like, four grand, like, with the lens yeah. and the body. I'm like, why are you trying to pay me, like, 200 bucks for the night? Like, what is that? So, like... I think that in its in itself is like it's like kind of disrespectful towards like photographers. I feel like you've experienced that before. I've experienced it before. Like, oh yeah, like, all the time. How are you? I, I feel like it's it's crazy that like people don't really respect the the camera world. Like even like not not getting tagged on things and like not even like it's just crazy. Like we're doing like it's an art. It's an art. Like if, yeah. if you're going to like you know an art gallery or something like that and someone's names on something like that and um, like a photo or, or or painting whatever like and it's like four grand you're gonna buy it like it's because yeah. the the value of it like even if you tell them your value and they're like oh that's too much like like we can only give you three inch it's like really dude like you see yeah. my work like like your work's so awesome like you probably mm. you know you probably confronted someone and be like dude like why are you even paying like 200 bucks for like a six hour shoot like it's crazy i think what it comes down to is like and you know it definitely depends where you are within like your career of course uh but you know, you're going to be able to charge different rates depending on what you're shooting, you know, because as a business, when you're investing in a photographer, um, the ROI needs to be very clear for them. You know, the return on investment where it's like, all right, if like, for example, that's why restaurant photography is very easy to do and it's very monetizable. It's because, all right, if I'm shooting for a fine dining restaurant, if my marketing gets them two tables a week, they know they made at least $800 off of the marketing, you know what I'm saying? So they could justify paying me a few thousand dollars a month, you know, to come in every week and shoot photos and stuff like that. You know, whereas in concert photography, it's like, honestly, like I've never even got paid to shoot a concert. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it's crazy because like these paid. people are like, like you're taking dope ass photos and, and like, like obviously like the person you're ph- photographing is like, you know, somebody. So they've, they've like a f- huge following and stuff. So like, I don't know why that's like not in the budget. Like obviously, like it's cool that you can yeah. you can build your portfolio doing that stuff. But like it's like damn, like like you're just so good. I'm like it's it's crazy. Like because I feel like full time photography is a hard thing to get into too. Like a lot of people like it's a misconception. Like it's like all right, like you can take all these photos, but like half the time you're not even getting paid. And it's like damn, dude. Like like it's just it's it's definitely there, there's definitely a trade off, and you know the way I view it is I've you know up until this point have been okay with that because. You know, I know how to net- network myself properly and I know how to make the most of the opportunity. So when I'm going to a shoot, I'm trying to meet as many people as I can, put out the best work that I can, have the best, you know, uh, turnaround time so that the people that I'm sending the photos to, they're like, oh, like this kid's actually really good. You know, and eventually that leads to like better opportunities and stuff like that. So, you know, and in, this, in the music space, it is a little weird because, you know, let's say you're shooting a concert and stuff like that. Based off of ticket sales, there's so many people that have to get paid. You know, you have the touring agency, which handles the marketing, the production, this and that, you know, down to the security guards have to get paid, you know, and then obviously the artists themselves, they're requesting a lot of money, you know, so it's like, realistically, like I've seen a lot of, you know, media budgets where it's like, uh, I've been offered maybe like $150 to shoot a show. That's and I'm like, honestly, at this point, I'd rather just do it for free because I don't want to feel like I'm valuing my work at $150. Yeah. You know, so in those spaces where it's hard to be like, all right, if you're shooting a show, what kind of return investment are they getting off of that? You know, like, yes, they can use those photos to uh, to market future concerts and stuff like that. But, you know, it's it's a very gray area where they could be like, all right, here's exactly how we're going to be making our money back if we're investing this much money into you. True. And because there are people out there that are going to be willing to do it for free. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that also messes up the market where it's like if you have this person, this person, this person willing to do it for this rate, if your rate is all the way up here, you know, it's going to be harder to find that middle ground and that compromise. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, you know, you just got to find your other ways to be able to to monetize it in your own way. You know, now that I have, you know, a a plethora of different artists in my catalog, 
you know, I'm able to charge more for my personal shoots. You know, so that's where I kind of see the investment really yeah. come in. Yeah, definitely. What's your point of view on editing, bro? Because I'm like, I'm on the, I'm at like this point where I love editing photos, but I just like despise editing videos at this point. Like, I cannot stand it. Like, it's so time consuming. Like, I just like, I'm like every time. I mean, it depends on. All right, it depends on the 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 type of video. But like, if it's like a like a long form video or something like that, I just like, I'd rather pay someone to do it because I, I just at this point. I love shooting. I just don't like editing. Like it's it's just so it's honestly draining. It's mentally draining. I'm at the screen for hours. I'm like, dude, like this is like this is not the fun part. And that's what like people are like, oh, dude, like you make dude your job so easy. Do you make so much money, dude? I'm like, dude, like not really that fun. Like because you shoot it, and that's the fun part. That's the fun. You know, the the day of it is fun. But then like when you're by yourself for like nine hours in your bedroom, like a freaking vampire for the rest of the day, like it's like it's so it's just it's too much. It's exhausting. But I think like that's a part of it that like you kind of got to like, I guess, deal with. But like yeah. I just I'm just at the point where like I just don't want to do it anymore. Like obviously I love, you know, editing photos. I, I think that's the fun part about photos is editing. it. That's the fun part. So it's like opposite. Like if you record a video, the editing is the bad part. And then like not only the bad part, but the annoying part. But like when yeah. you when you shoot, I feel like either way it's going to be good and good. Like I, I, I can never I never I never complain about photos. But do video is just like taking over my life. Dude, it's just it's so mm. it's annoying. No, it's super time consuming. And like that's the bridge where, you know, at the end of the day. Even if you're pursuing something you love, there's going to be the work aspect of it, which is super tedious. You know, at the end of the day, at least you don't have to like clock in and clock out. True. At, yeah. You know what I'm saying? At a certain thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is the drawback. You know, uh, you know, so, you know, and if you feel like you're being properly compensated, where it's like you're not just being compensated for when you show up to the shoot and actually record everything and shoot everything, you're being compensated for the prep that you do beforehand during the day, day of the shoot, and post-production, you know? So if you feel like you're being properly compensated for, that definitely helps. But I would say ultimately, you know, the things in photography that are, that make the most money, you know, you get to that end of the spectrum where it's like, all right, at the end of the day, weddings pay so much money. You know, if you if you really want to make a living off photography, shooting weddings and stuff like that is like bread and yeah, butter. If you do, let's say you do, let's say you price like, you know, an average of five thousand dollars for a wedding and shoot like 20 of them it's a hundred thousand dollars for the year oh yeah like what no like, no like it's insane it's crazy but that is such a mental job it's not like a physical or like a a skill set job like obviously in that it is but the majority of the work is mental because you have to remember posing you have to remember obviously the schedule your timing like obviously capturing the moment like you're it's a lot of it's a high pressure job so that's why it, it costs a lot but i think you know, obviously experience and all that stuff comes along too. But like, I, that's another thing I'd, I'd want to get into too. But I feel like wedding video, like even like I just said, like it's a whole thing, whatever, like that pays way more. And it's obviously easier to do that. But either way, you have the wedding space too. That, that We shot a wedding together one time or yeah. two, two times, three times maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A handful of times yeah. we shot weddings. Yeah. So we, um, I mean, you know, like, you know, like obviously the pressure is on like every time, oh, yeah. every single time the pressure is on. So, I mean, I definitely agree, like, it does pay the bills, and, you know, you can bang one video, one wedding out, and, like, you're done for the month. Like, you're done. Yeah. You know, but the, the, but the drawback is you're not going to want to shoot for a month, because you just, like, you're shooting something where, yes, you made a lot of money off of it, but it did not, it, it, it hinders your actual passion for the art itself. Yeah. And, I mean, you got like you said, like, like you got to do what pays, pays the bills, and then, like, you know, you have, like, let's say you have two, two weddings in a month, now you have, like, 28 um 29 30 days in a month to do what you want to do you know what i'm saying like you can yeah. figure out like you know passion projects and portraits and stuff and that's what i'm trying to focus on more now like i'm trying to focus on like passion projects and doing stuff i want to do because like obviously you know i have my retainer clients and whatnot but um and obviously like i love i love working for them but i feel like i'm like drawing back from what i want to do like really really truly like deep down what i want to do and i think that's like it's like it's hard because obviously you're you know you're getting booked and people love your work and stuff but it's like you're kind of just taking, 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 but you're not like doing what you really want to do, like deep down. You're like, because I want to shoot like you know a lot of um product photos. Like I'm really into like the high quality product photos, like macro shots, like all those really detailed stuff. And like, like e-commerce kind of. Like, yeah, it's like makeup, shooting makeup on stuff. Like I would love to see my work in Ulta one day. Like I want to, I want to be able to shoot stuff like that and like do it in the comfort of my house. Like I can like control the lighting, all that cool stuff. Like I've showed you obviously examples that oh, one yeah, no, no, video. Oh yeah, no, you've done great work with it. Yeah, so it, it's fun, but um yeah, I mean that I think that's that's like the balance in photography like it's hard to sometimes like have time to do like what you want to do like or like you know 
focus on the passion, the passionate part of it. Cause sometimes it feels like work and that's the problem. Like, I'm like, dude, like, like it's full time, but I don't know. Sometimes you just need a break and just do like a fun stuff. Like if we shot in the studio, like I'd be like, dude, like I needed yeah. this. I needed mm-hmm. it. And it kind of refreshes you. Like you're like, all right, like I really love this again. Like, so, so I would say the, the goal for me is to really just hone in on making prints. Uh, I would love to have a photo book eventually. Uh, yeah, and really that. just getting in more of like the gallery space. I think the, the idea, which is definitely inspired by people like Tyler Shields, for example, has definitely inspired me to be like, all right, I love being able to put so much work into one photo. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something so beautiful about it where if you're able to make something that resonates with you a lot and be able to put that into one picture, I think there's nothing else like it. Well, when, you, when you're talking about prints, do you mean like landscapes? Like if you're going like, you know, a drone photo or something like that, or like water, like some like a cool say ocean shot or something like that? More so like fine art. Okay. Like fine art prints. I think that's definitely something I really enjoy a lot. Um, like the Solitude series was really fun to shoot, you know, and we're still working on that. Um, and that was something where I realized that's what I really wanted to focus on when I found myself in this weird, like, creative block. And, you know, I could post photos and, and stuff like that. And I was I was really just so worried about how other people would receive it. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just had to sit down and be like, all right, well, if I just make something that I truly care about and resonates with me and use my camera as more of a form of self-expression mm-hmm. instead of just trying to capture what other people are like doing, yep. uh, using it as a form of self-expression and, and really encompassing what it is to be an artist, that is what really motivated me. Yeah. You know, so I have a few things set up for the Solitude series, for example, where the whole idea of that print series is to be a reflection of what it's like to have either so much going on around you or just feeling very isolated, uh, which is something that I feel like I've dealt with in the past. So I think being able to make photographs where I see it and it resonates with me to to such a deep, like, uh, deep level, where it's like, all right, that makes me feel like this is, this is like very purposeful, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what makes me feel very validated within like my own space yeah and it feels so good to print it out right like once you print it out and you're like it bl- it's blown up and you can feel it like that's like it's like the physical like i don't know i guess like it's just it's just awesome like when you get to see like the detail and you get to like just put it on your wall and you're like i really did that i really did that mm-hmm. like it's crazy like when i first printed like the first you know handful of the photos on the wall whatever like especially like, that one of you like dude we took that like yeah. two and a half years ago or three years yeah, ago it's nuts. like and i like retouched it a little bit whatever but i printed it out because i never printed it out i don't print anything out and like you've always done prints yeah. but like i was like dude i gotta print my stuff out like i gotta i gotta make a little little gallery in my room and i was like dude this photo like especially i'm just saying like obviously an example like i, fo- I printed that out and i was like it's just so it's so different like when it's on your phone as to like when it's in your hand and you print it out and you put it on the wall, it's like this is like really good. Like no, you definitely appreciate it a lot more. Yeah, um, and that's definitely something I feel like every artist kind of like searches for is that level of I want other people to appreciate this just as much as I do. You know, if the if this photo or if this painting or whatever it is like hits this spot with me, hope like my job is to make someone else feel the same way. Yeah. You know, and when it comes to, you know, delving into fine art photography, it's like, all right, well, if you're in a space where as an artist, you're able to make something that's worth X amount of money, you know, if I'm able to shoot photos and I don't have to charge anybody, that would be awesome. Yeah, I would you know, do it for free. If you do it yeah. for free, then you love it. Then you really yeah, like Yeah, exactly. You know, and like to this day, like I do, a, I still do a lot of like, I'm not going to call it charity work, but I do a lot of things for free because at the end of the day, like. There's that growth you get from just constantly shooting, keeping your camera in your hand and stuff like that. So, um, you know, being able to do things for free, you know, I know it's like almost looked at in a poor light in modern society where it's like, you know, hey, you know, you need to know your worth and, you know, you should always charge and, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. But, you know, as an artist, you know, having that kind of line for yourself where you're like at the end of the day, if I'm just happy shooting, then I'm just going to do what makes me happy, yeah. you know, because, you know, not everybody has the budget to hire a professional photographer for something and, and stuff like that. So I try not to let money, you know, get in the way of 
what I wanted to do. Yeah. Like, even, like, you know, people I know, like, like personally, like I'll go to their house, like, for an event or whatever it is, like, even, like, on Easter. Like, I just, you know, shot some photos for some friends. Like, it was fun. Like, I actually liked doing it, and I kind of just, like, draw back from, like, the, the work aspect of it, and I just, like, I don't know, I just fall in love with it every time. Like, when I'm not, like, when there's no money, there's no numbers involved, like, like you know, we, obviously, we can make the money that, you know, we're supposed to make. But, like, when there's no money involved, like, like you just said, like, you kind of just, like, appreciate it more. Like, you, you're just, like, you're just yourself, you know. You, you fall back in love with it. You kind of find your rhythm again. Like, not saying that you lost it, but, like, it's just a lot more, I don't know. It just, it feel, and it feels good to do it, too. It feels good. It feels good to, like, capture the moment. And that's why, like, I love taking photos and, like, doing videos and stuff. And, um, you know, a lot of people have, like, terrible memory. Like, and, and that's, like, it's, like, I feel like it's our job to, like, make up for that. Like, and, and, and you know... It's just like the thing, like the perspectives and point of views that people don't really think about. And then we take the photo and it's like, dude, what? Like, oh my God, like, oh, grandma's over there or whatever it is. Like, yeah. like I wasn't even, I was in the other room. Like, dude, like, I'm so glad you got that shot, whatever. Like, I think that's like the, the purpose. Like, I think that's like our purpose. Like, just like, you know, like have people, I don't know, like just remember something without actually remembering it. Like, it's like a physical memory. And mm. that's like the, that's like the best thing about what we do. It's like, it's yeah. fun. It's like meaningful. It's like. It's awesome. It's art. It's awesome. Yeah. No, I remember when I shot DC the Don, uh, he had brought his little brother out stage. And one thing I noticed was that when his little brother came on stage, there was two other photographers there. And they ended up, like, putting their cameras down. You know what I'm saying? Because this was, like, already more than halfway through the set. Um, and, you know, so they put their cameras down because they had already pretty much gotten their, their photos of DC and stuff like that. They didn't really, they didn't really care to, like, shoot the rest. Uh, but I kept shooting, and I was able to get some really nice photos of DC the Don performing with, like, his, I don't know, 10-year-old little brother, you know? And those were the best photos that I took the entire night, you know, because I ended up sending them to this family, and they wanted a print of it, you know, so I was able to send them a print. And it was like, you know, you know that, you know, DC's little brother will appreciate that photo for so long. You know, that's such a, it's such a core memory you know, that you're able to capture for someone else where it's like, imagine being 10 years old and your other and your older brother is this super big rapper and everyone is cheering for him and singing his songs and stuff like that. And it's like, imagine having a role model like that, you know? So I have this really cool photo of, you know, just them like in the air and then I have a photo of him throwing his little brother into the crowd. Like being able to capture that for someone's just like so awesome. Like you can't even put a price on it. Yeah, it's priceless. Every, every photo I take is priceless and everything that like, like when you took that photo, you're like, dude, like this is like, like it's it's like you said it's a core moment like it's a core memory like and they don't think about it in the moment because they're in the moment like in the present like and you're living it and then like, when someone's able to snapshot that it's like oh, dude it's like it's the best thing best feeling in the world when you get it too especially when you finally mm -hmm. got that you're like dude this is like amazing like yeah and like you you know like you were like you were the only one to get it because obviously the other photographers didn't even care enough to do it because they're thinking yeah. about the money yeah they're thinking about the yeah money. And they're thinking about all right like i'm finally not finally, but, like, I'm shooting a rapper, so I'm just going to shoot the rapper and, you know, yeah. anything yeah. else is, like, I could really care less about. But, yeah. you know, being able to give those photos to him is, like, worth way more than anything else that I shot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? Do you, like, I mean, I feel like at this point in, obviously, our day and age, like, I feel like social media is kind of just, like, the validation, whole validation thing and, like, comparison and all that stuff. I think that's, like, kind of, like, the, it's kind of toxic. And, you know, there's so many different, you know, styles of photos, so many different styles of, like, videos and stuff. Like, I feel like sometimes I kind of, like, get in, like, the habit of, like, comparing myself. And, like, everyone just has their own style. Like, everyone just has, like, their own, like, you know, lighting technique. Like, you can tell, like, easily, like, like off rip, but you can tell, like, all right, like, yeah, this dude took that photo, like, because he used yeah. this type of light. Or, like, this guy, you know, made this video because he did this type of edit or whatever. Like, I feel like sometimes I get, like, so caught up in, like, comparison. But, like, I just, like, I kind of, like give myself a second i'm like i just stop comparing myself and kind of just appreciate everybody because everyone exactly. is just so different and everyone like sees life differently and like when you're able to present it through a camera through digital like like equipment nowadays like it's so instant and it's so like you can like tweak it how you want it and stuff like and it's just it's just cool to see other people's like perspectives and how they think and how they want to color things and and you know the way they post it if they put like the white borders on or if they like they stack it on top of each other or, or they like it super dark or super bright like i think that's like awesome and and it's it's easy for people nowadays especially when they first start like like dude like my stuff sucks dude like think of this guy's thing like he started off just like you dude like mm -hmm. i was terrible when i first started i was literally so bad like i was like yeah. and now i look back like if you ever look back on yourself and you're like ew dude oh, that like, little edit yeah. is so bad you're yeah. like why did i and you kept using the same preset and it's so bad it's like 
-hmm. now like, you kind of just like grow into like a certain style and like you find your rhythm and it's like like now we're here like like now you're here now i'm here like now being able to be in this in the space of like all right now you're able to reflect on everything that you've done over the years nah it, it is really cool i think my style now is definitely in a it's it's really aiming towards just like timelessness yeah. you know i really try not to to do too much editing in terms of changing colors or anything like that i try to make things as true to Super life natural. as possible yeah yeah, yeah as true to life as possible and then some yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, like, like yes i wanted whatever, yeah, yeah like yeah i wanted to pop and stuff like that and of course like i'll take care of people's blemishes or this that and the other thing you know what i'm saying because at the end of the day, like especially a thing like a pimple for example it's like that's not going to be there tomorrow so i don't mind getting rid of it now you know so uh yeah getting in you know and i think the the thing that i find really interesting is how everyone like you just said recently like oh some people do the white borders and the other thing how people choose to how like um uh, they choose how they want their work to be digested mm -hmm. you know i think that's something that is not very talked about a whole lot uh, you know, whether you're like, of course, Instagram is like the main way people try and share photos yeah. and stuff like that. But like things like the white border or, uh, a big thing, especially I do nowadays is the over the slides, yeah. you know, how you can take one landscape photo, or... yeah, the continuous slides and stuff like that. Uh, or putting your things in Instagram reels or in TikToks and stuff like that. You know, I don't think people really talk about, all right, what is the impact in terms of you know, yes, you could take a great photo, but ultimately choosing how you want it to be digested mm -hmm. by people is just as important. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted to hear your take on this. I know I know you've done it. I'm not coming at you. Uh, but what do you think about, you know, photographers putting their work into TikToks or like Instagram reels? As in like like a slideshow type of thing, whatever? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's cool, but like when you do it too fast and I can't really like eat it up, I can't like see the actual photo i gotta like pause it and like you know slide the screen across it i think that's like a little too much but i think it's cool i think and it like the slideshow thing is cool if you have like a bts before it. if you have like a cool iphone video before it and it's like you know, like like someone like doing something or you setting up whatever like the shot and then like, it's like the before the after or, or like um the setup versus the shot like, i think that's cool mm -hmm. and like slideshows are cool whatever but like at that point just post the damn photos like because yeah. like, i can't like actually look at it and like like appreciate it like I mean, if you use a, you know, a viral sound or you're just trying to, like, you know, gain followers, like, that's one thing. But, like, for me, like, as a photographer, like, if I'm, like, trying to, like, see your work and, like, you know, be like, all right, this dude's cool. Like, I can't even, I can't even look at the damn photo because, like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm like, it's too much. I'm too stimulated. Like, it's crazy. So, it's cool to, like, I don't know, like, all the trends and stuff are cool, whatever. But um, I just, I don't know. I think nowadays, like, social media is awesome, like, in terms of business stuff. But outside of that um i think it's just super toxic like i think i think people would just like compare themselves like as a person nowadays and it's like it's just weird like i'm like people take it too seriously and they post oh, everything yeah. i'm like you don't have to post that like you don't really need to post you crying and you don't need to post like like oh my it's, god it's like yeah. it's not like they're like <laughs> I mean, maybe they're looking for sympathy but i don't know like that's like an example but people just like i don't know they take it too seriously and, and i think it's it's gone away from the social aspect it's more of like a comparison like a like a almost like a I don't know, like, like war. It's weird. Like, it's just like evil kind of in a sense. I mean, obviously, like, I don't know, like, like girls are like the, the main ones on there. Like the OnlyFans crap, whatever, like people are making money off it. That's a good thing. Cool. Whatever. Like, mm -hmm. you know, people are into that, whatever. But, um, I think for businesses and stuff, I think that's cool. Like, like obviously photographers and like, you know, restaurants and stuff and, you know, clothing brands, that's like a huge one. Like, you know, you post like a, a sponsored photo on a story or whatever like that. Like people are scrolling through their friends stuff and they, you know, oh, dude, that sweatshirt is cool, whatever. I think in that mm -hmm. sense, like social media is awesome right now. But yeah. outside of that, dude, like you think the same thing, right? It's just like, it's like, it's like mental war almost, right? Yeah. I, I honestly, I think like this might be a hot take. But I, I really just, I don't think that putting your photos in TikToks and Instagram Reels is, like, I'm not going to say it's corny, but I think it's twisting the way in which photos are meant to be digested. Yeah. You know, so, like, if you're, like, for example, since I aspire to have an audience where it's, like, they really like prints and stuff like that, prints are super still. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I would never really be, like, I don't think marketing my work in a TikTok or Instagram reel and putting it in that algorithm of very, like, uh, you know, low attention span, like, very quick, uh, quick digestion is, like, really, it doesn't really make sense for me. 
Uh, and I think the people that have the most longevity in in this space, they don't do that. Yeah. You know, like, um, like as I mentioned before, like the Gunnar Stahls or the Walter Brady's or the Tyler Shields, like, like even even not even just photographers. Like, do you like? I don't think like Van Gogh would be putting his painting yeah. really on TikTok. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like it's a video app. It's not. It's not like a photo app. Like exactly. I don't know. I mean, like. It's however, like you said, like it's however people want, you know, want their work to be digested and like how they want to, you know, promote their stuff, whatever. But I don't think it's really, I think it's pretty silly, but yeah. I mean, it's whatever. I mean, people's styles are how, how they want it to be. And, um, I think like, you know, following trends is also important sometimes. Like if you see like someone's numbers are crazy for this one type of edit or whatever it is, like on Instagram, obviously you can like put it in, put your own twist to it and like not like copy yeah, exactly. them, but um, just try to like make your boost your profile and your personal brand. At the end of the day, it, it is a very saturated space. So, you know, you do have to do certain things where it's like, all right, I kind of need to play the algorithm a little bit and I need to do, uh, do certain things where it's like, not that that, like, not that would anything that would compromise your integrity. Uh, you know, although some people do do that, you know, where they, they make certain moves where it definitely compromises who they are as a person and stuff like that. But you know, as an artist, just doing things in a in a smart way where you're able to get more eyes on your work. Because at the end of the day, that's the goal. You know what I'm saying? It's to have as many eyes on your work as possible and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, there definitely is some sort of control you can have over who you want to bring in. You know, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, like, like what kind of fashion brand do you want to be? You know, do you want to be a Sheen or like a Timu? Or yeah. do you want to be like a... <laughs> You know, I'm not going to... Balenciaga or Yeah, I was going to say... Yeah, and you yeah, didn't want to like, drop Balenciaga. Right? Yeah, like you have fast fashion and then all the way on the right you have like couture, you know, where it's like those are one of one dresses and pieces and stuff like that. So it's like where do you see yourself on that scale? You know what I'm saying? In, in any art, there's definitely that kind of... Uh, that like little, you know, happy medium where... or anywhere on that scale where you really want to choose to be. I think, dude, you've been in the streetwear for a long time, right? Like, even, like, before I met you, like, I, I saw your Instagram, like, you were wearing, like, all the revenge stuff and, like, all that cool, like, I don't know, like, Cargate, whatever rings you got. You got some cool shit, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what you got. You got some cool stuff. But, um, yeah, but you've been in the clothes game for a minute. Like, I feel like just recently I've been, like, after you gave me those Supreme hats, like, like three Supreme hats, whatever, mm -hmm. I was like, dude, I love Supreme now. Like, I love Supreme. I've, I've liked Supreme for a while, now I like, love it. Like, I love, like, just going on Goat and, like, looking through it, like, window shopping and stuff, whatever, kind of figure out, like, what I want and stuff, and obviously buying, like, a bunch of clothes, too, but, um, dude, like, I feel like streetwear is, like, like I don't know, it's it, it's awesome. I, I like I like dressing, like, like streetwear now. I, I feel like my style has completely changed since I got older, like, especially, like, you know, people like you and like other people that wear you know streetwear stuff whatever like i love like balenciaga like i love like all these dope ass brands like i never really i never really looked into them re until recently like i really yeah, like yeah. i really like i respect the 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 fashion now like, i like i like to you know obviously like even like their their social media pages like like the way their photos are taken and stuff like that it's just awesome like i know obviously yeah. you like love clothes too like i love clothes. oh yeah like, no nah, I've, I've always been i've always been into clothes and it's crazy you say that because you know you know, shooting back to what I said earlier, it's like, dude, ASAP Rocky just had the influence. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, ASAP Rocky was really huge in the streetwear, so that made me really want to be in the streetwear. And then, you know, I was listening to a lot of, like, GEZ back in middle school, and so it's like, all right, now you have young Gerald wearing, like, leather jackets and, like, on the cover of GQ wearing suits and stuff like that. So, like, you know, I remember, uh, you know, back in the day where I was, like, I was, like, class president or something like that. So I was, like, you know, I had to wear suits every now and then. And I'm like, you know what, yeah, like, you know, at the end of the day, just being in a fashion in general is definitely something that I found myself, you know, really finding an outlet of interest in, you know, whether it's a form of self-expression or, you know, like I went to Southern Regional uh, High School, like my junior and senior year, and it's like fashion is like just not. Yeah, it's like more like an athletic where like, I feel like it's just where you are, like, like determines what you wear sometimes, like the culture and like, I guess like the inspiration. I don't know. I, I think it's just like. I don't know, and, and then there's always like that one ball, uh, oddball, like you, like you'll just pop out with some crazy crap, and like you don't even care. It's all about like not worrying about what people like think of you, like 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 people yeah. think there's like a standard or what to wear, and like you can wear whatever, whatever you want, no, like, whatever like, you want. <laughs> I remember like my whole grade, it was it was all like college sweatshirts and like, dude, oh my god, you, you know what Sanooks are? Yeah, I used to wear those all the time. Yeah, yeah they're they're right. comfortable. They're, like I used to wear them way too much. I know they're comfortable, but dog, everyone wore those there every day. And the thing I thought was like really ironic was like, 
like people would always like joke about the things that I wore and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I won best dress. Really? You, know what you I mean? did? Yeah. You never told me yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won That's best dress, so cool. and I also won most likely to become famous. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I agree. <laughs> That's <laughs> sick, dude. I mean, like, hey, you know, we we had the politics on our side then. The thing was, I I was like, uh, I tried to market to like the theater kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because believe it or not, the, there's a lot of theater kids. You know, so me being someone who's like playing lacrosse and was like in this like group of people i was like you know you know like i had the personality where it's like i was friends with like everybody yeah. you know so i think that is probably the reason why i got those you know superlatives but you know i think it just speaks for itself where at the end of the day if you if you're wearing what you feel very comfortable in like especially today dude like i'm wearing very like more more of a very like casual lounge stuff but that's because i want to be able to speak in a, in a way where I don't feel like I'm trying to be someone I'm not. Yeah, I low-key, like, we're wearing the same colors, kind of, sort of. I didn't, yeah, yeah, we yeah. didn't plan this, by same the way. Palette. I don't know why this is happening. But <laughs> nah, same palette, same I palette. Like, like, I mean, we have the same, dude, we have the same brain, pretty much. Like, I feel like, I mean, I didn't, I unintentionally threw these on. Like, I could have easily put something else on, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I just love wearing camo and baggy, baggy clothes and, obviously, my Red Rabbit stuff, like, Elwood, like, style stuff and obviously my vintage shirt like i, mm. know, I just wear what i wear what feels good like i used to wear like you know stuff that was just like i don't know i, I don't know, like the collar shirts and stuff like i don't know things that i i wasn't really, really expressing myself but in a sense i i was but i couldn't i didn't really find my style i feel like you have to find your style eventually you gotta find oh, yeah. you gotta be like, all right like i and you know obviously like asap rocky, asap rocky for you like he you know kind of influenced you sort of like kind of but like even like me like I'll, I'll go through pinterest or i'll look at like you know kanye's outfits or whatever like i love the way like people you know layer things and then like obviously shoes like sometimes i have a hard time finding shoes too like i feel like if i find like a good like i love yeezys like first of all i love yeezys if you find a good shoe i feel like the shoe makes the whole fit like oh yeah you like if you wear anything ever and like if you can put a fire shoe on to match it if the shoe makes the fit like or a hat like obviously like yeah, like yeah, top yeah. to bottom it has to make sense it has to like you know you know blow up the outfit but i don't know i just i love where i love wearing clothes i like I like messing stuff up i like expressing myself like you know show my style off and stuff whatever but you know i'm building my my wardrobe slowly but surely nice, i've been nice. trying to go to the city more like like we went to um we did that shoot at um the one hotel and I went to Kith like right after oh, that. Oh yeah, like, uh, yeah. We shot at Hotel Chantel. Yeah, yeah. And then we went to Kith, and I don't know. I just feel like I was like, I feel like that was like where I like, I feel like th that clothes like resonates with me. Like I feel like mm -hmm. it's loud. It's like it's like it wants it, it wants to be on me. Like I want to I want to wear all this crap. Like yeah. I feel like if you go to like you know Supreme or Kith or or like um I don't know, even like Balenciaga or whatever. I feel like that's where like, even though it's so expensive, it's like it's like dude, I just love this clothes. I appreciate it so much. Like yeah. I'm not going to Old Navy, dude. Like I'm not going to nah, Old Navy. Yeah, I don't go. I don't go packs on no more. Like I don't do that stuff. Like I'm not saying like obviously like I only you know wear that stuff, but like it's just like I just love clothes, bro. I just, I'm like, no, just fi just ha just finding your own like taste. You know, it's it's the same thing across the board with so many other things like food. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, in the clothing aspect, it's like all right, like. You know, I've definitely made some some questionable, you know, attire choices in my day, mm -hmm. for sure. You know, but if I started here, I had to experiment all the way over here to find out that I liked shit over here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you gotta, you gotta fuck around and find out a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. You know, same thing with food. Like, I was never really, like, a seafood person. Really? Dude, I fucking I love, love sushi. sushi. I mean, I feel like everyone loves sushi. Oh, now. we're obsessed it's, with sushi. It's not, like, a hot take. That's, like, all we do. We yeah. eat sushi. Like, every time we go out, what, we only eat sushi, right? <laughs> nah, it's always, it's sashimi and nigiri. From now on, you know what I'm saying. I don't. I'm not too into the the like the raw plated seafood like that. Like just by itself, that's what sashimi really? is, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's got to be on top of a roll, or like you got to like put it in like a poke bowl or something like that. Dude, you know what you gotta try, bro? Dude. Have you ever had toro? No. Dude, so toro is like the underbelly of uh, a bluefin tuna, right? It's like a really, it's like really marbleized and super soft, and it's like a picture like a regular piece of tuna. But it looks like yellowtail, mm -hmm. but super buttery. Like I'm telling you, nah, well, it's expensive or no? It's pretty expensive. Like most places, if like if a piece of shimi costs like I don't know, maybe like what five dollars a piece or something like that, Toro is normally like fifteen to twenty dollars. Oh a yeah, piece. That's, yeah, yeah. jump. Yeah, but it's, it's a big jump, I mean, but it's so fine. I mean, I feel like I'd spend however much money on food. Like that's the one thing I'll spend. You know, I'll spend whatever on food. I feel like there's a lot of people nowadays. We're definitely in like a weird like food culture. Yeah. Where like everyone just wants to eat. Yeah. I mean, what else is there to do? Like, if you if you really think about it, like like what else is there to do? I mean, besides like go out to dinner with your friends. I mean, yeah. Yeah. outside of like you know the work and stuff. Like, there's more things to do. Like, but like the mm -hmm. most common thing is like go out to dinner. 
Like, let's yeah. experience this. Like, like you know, let's go, let's go try a new spot, like, up north or, like, an hour away or whatever it is. Like, I feel like that's, like, that's, like, the the norm now. Like, you said, yeah. like, like go try new food, spend however much money, and, like, like it's fun. It's awesome. It takes a photo. Because food is the best way to, like, connect with people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the best medium of, you know, having good dialogue is just having some really awesome food in front of you. That and music, too. Music has that kind of, like, impact, which is why I'm so drawn to it, why I love shooting it so much. You know, like, uh, and especially the loud, in the like studio. How loud it is super loud. It's like, yes. <laughs> I love Dude, it. in the studio, there's nothing like it. Ray has, so Ray has two studios in his house. He has one in his basement, which is fully decked out, super modern, uh, very simplistic, but it has really more than everything you need. Uh, and then the normal studio we normally will cook in is on, like, the main level and stuff like that. And it's, like, the, the vibes that we have in there. Dude, I, so... I had a session recently with uh, Shakir Smalls and Franklin POV was there. Yeah, I, on your story, you put on a story. I stood up yeah. on it, right? Yeah yeah, 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 Franklin was there too. First off, shout out Franklin. Franklin Isn't he from Jersey? Am I bugging? Yes, okay. he's from Jersey. Okay. What's crazy is, dude, we have so many great artists, like from photographer Jersey. wise, that are from Jersey. Yeah. Willem Verbeek from Jersey. Garrett Bruce from Jersey. Uh, Franklin, Jersey. Yeah. We're, we're from, you know what I'm saying? Like, definitely, Jer- I feel like it's weird, but Jersey has so many good artists that come out of it. They're just not like a list famous. Yeah, isn't SZA out of Jersey too? I feel like I heard that I recently. Know. I feel like SZA. I mean, I might be wrong. It's only fact check me, whatever. But yeah, like it's, from Cherry Hill, Jersey, from Cherry Hill, Jersey. Like Jersey? Russ, Russ, is, Russ is from Jersey. That's, I didn't even know Russ that. Is from crazy. Cherry Hill. Yeah, we got it. But um, but yeah, it's like that that studio session. It we probably started. I was at the studio from like probably like 6 p.m. that day, and Shakir Smalls and uh, and Franklin came in around like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and, you know, uh, you know, we were, like, I didn't partake, but they were doing some shrooms, and then we did, like, this whole, like, meditation thing, Mm -hmm. right, and then uh, after meditating, we just started making music and stuff like that, and it was, like, to be able to be in that atmosphere where it's, like, just four people in a room, you know, but it's, like, Shakir's voice, like, he was making music unlike anything that is out right now right so for him to be making something so melodic and so like seeing that kind of development of what makes a really really good curated song it's it's something that like you know we were up until seven o'clock in the morning and i'm over there like i'm running to raise living room taking 10 minutes real quick to close my eyes and like come back Mm -hmm. because i was up i think that day i was up for over like 25 hours or something like something ridiculous but it was like when you're in that moment bro dude there's nothing like being in the studio the time doesn't exist time doesn't exist like when you're when you're really like like the music keeps you alive the music like keeps you going i think i love that i love that like like experience in the studio when someone's cooking some crazy song like like and you showed me like some songs like some unreleased stuff like from your voice whatever like in the car and i was like dude just like so good like, some people were, some people are just super good like in their natural like and they just like they just know how to lay it down on a verse like they just yeah. know how to do it and it's cool to be able to like, be in front of that like i've shot i've shot a bunch of artists like either a music video or like in the studio or i've just even been in the studio like my buddy ish is a producer like i think you met him before i'm not sure but um it's just cool like seeing like the workflow of that stuff and like being able to like appreciate the work while it's getting made and then like you bump that thing like real loud like right after when it's done and, he, and yeah. he's like you know he's um he's mastering and mixing and mastering and you're watching him it's like this is crazy dude this is crazy but i don't know i just i, I appreciate that like you appreciate that like and, but it's also cool like um just like you know chilling with the boys is like vibing the music I, I feel like you don't have to say nothing it's like no. it's like a mutual like you just vibing, bro. Like like me, you could just like chill and not say a word for two hours, just bumping like you know whatever song. Like have you ever heard of Bacar? No, I haven't. Um, dude, oh, fuck, what was that? What's that other name? Um, I can never remember everyone's names ever. Like I can't. I'm so bad with names. Are you bad with names? Yeah, I can't remember yeah, names yeah, from yeah, life. Yeah. Like I never. I, I'm good with faces because I have a visual memory. But dude, I can't remember no one's names. But either way, yeah, music music is life. It's yeah, like when you make when you make videos. Like like if you do if you choose the right song. Like if you choose about and people always tell me they're like, dude, you pick the best music for every song like for every um, video. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I just it just resonates with me. Everything like like when you feel it, you know it's right. Like I could be scrolling through Instagram like and looking for like audios for like three hours, literally three hours, and I'm like, yeah. dude, I can't find anything. It doesn't hit. It didn't feel right. Like like and then finally hits you like, yeah, it's a rap. And then like immediately you 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 bang the edit on like ten minutes like easily. So mm-hmm. I think music's important. Music is important, obviously in video and in life and you know making friends and building relationships and stuff. Like it's just cool. And then obviously concerts. The like, concerts are a huge thing. Like like if you go to dude, concerts, concerts are so fun. Yeah, like you go to a concert like 
I don't know what you were your boys in group, whatever, like Post Malone concert or some shit, something like that. Like I feel like it's it's really memorable and it's a good time. I think when you get to a point where you're able to bring people is when it's like, oh, like this is so much better. Yeah. You know, like uh, like starting out was like obviously I was just going by myself. I didn't really like have the pull to bring anybody with me, and <laughs> dude, <laughs> so embarrassing. To the studio so, or are you talking like not nah, not nah, to a concert, okay, like right. to a shoot, right? To a shoot. So I shot Lucky back in. Uh, like two years ago i shot lucky and i had like finagled my way to like get into the show like damn i hate saying this because like kind of blows my spot Mm -hmm. i had pretty much i pretty much lied and said i was shooting on behalf of this media company uh you know and they were like all right like cool like i sent them an email i was like hey like my editor cc'd on this like you know it's gonna be it's gonna be posted to here yada yada and they were like all right awesome meanwhile dude there's nobody nobody even cc'd on the email they were just like all right like come like it's cool uh, but yeah, so I shot Lucky, and then I requested to get a plus one, and I brought this girl that I like. I had a huge crush on. At the yeah. Time. Um, and she was a fan of him, stuff like that, and it was really cool. Like meeting Lucky was like sick because I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, so we were in like the the green room or whatever, like just like the room where everyone hangs out in, you know, where like they bring the rider and stuff like that, like all the food, tequila, whatever. And I'm sitting there. My girl is in the bathroom, and everyone else in the room like clears out. You know what I'm saying? Like, without saying a word, everyone just, like, clears out. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So, uh, next thing I know, Lucky walks in with, like, two or three other people. Like, one of them was, like, his videographer and then, like, maybe his manager and, like, a friend or something like that. Now I'm standing there and I'm like, I kind of feel, should I be here right now? You know? And then Lucky comes up to me and he's like, hey, yo, bro, like, do you have a hair tie? And I was like, no, but I was like, my girl's in the bathroom. She probably has one. So my girl comes out and like she ends up not having a hair tie, but very quickly I was like, nah, dude, don't worry about it. I got you. So I go in the crowd in like the media pit and I start asking people for hair ties. And I was like, yeah, guys, like it's for lucky. Next thing I know, dude, people are doing jewelry no at me. Shot. Like people are like, oh, give this to him, give it. Like getting like bead, like the, the bead bracelets, like little friendship <laughs> bracelets. You know, even even like the rubber ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, little, you know, like uh, the rubber friendship. Like, people are throwing them shit at me. Like, and then eventually I finally get a hair tie and I bring it back to him and stuff like that. Um, and then now we're like hanging back in the room and stuff, and you know the one of the the heads at the touring agency had come in and was like, hey, like you guys can't be here, like talking to me and my girl. And then Lucky was like, nah, bro, they're good, they're good. That's, and I was like, shut that's up, so dude, cool. all because I got him a hair tie, dude. It was fine. It's so cool. Yeah, and then I uh, I have a Polaroid of him and stuff like that as well. And like those are some of like my favorite photos I shot at the time. That's so you know, but I was able to bring a girl with me, which was really really cool but did not impress her as much as I thought it was because it turns out her ex-boyfriend was like a concert photographer oh and like God. has brought her around significantly bigger people than oh I God. did. So I was like, I was like, Oh, the shock value here is definitely not it. But getting to that point where you're able to bring people is definitely where you're like, all right, like this. Is- yeah, definitely. And the, like, it's, it's funny when I tell people like stories, like similar to how, like the story you just told and they're like, dude, I wish I was there. I was like, I can't bring you. Like, I'm sorry. Like, that's just like what it is. Like, but it's cool yeah. when like, sometimes you actually are like, you can be like, like, even if like, like, like a friend of mine was like, dude, I want to meet like this person, whatever. If I tell him like, I can like pretend and be like, dude, like I, it's my assistant. Like this is my BTS dude, whatever. Like, yeah. like in that circumstance, yeah, cool, whatever. But that's just dope. That's cool. But you also got to bring the right people around. Yeah. You know, you, know, you can bring people around who are going to start fanning out or like try and start pulling out their phone yeah. every five seconds and do the little like. Yeah. You know Sneaky. Saying? Like, oh, put the, the flash the, on accidentally. Yeah, 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 like, like, oh, oh, like, like, oh, like, oh, like, 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 <laughs> nah, you can't be bringing those people around. And people just like, I don't know, in those rooms, like one thing I've noticed is like vibes are super, super important. Yeah right and and the vibe is always so fragile for some reason Mo- like, for the most easily time it's it, it turns out yeah easily. yeah someone like especially in 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 like a studio space you know what i'm saying like the artist doesn't if something like turns the artist off and they don't really feel like recording anymore it's like all right then what are we all doing here you know what i'm saying so it's like you got to make sure if you're gonna bring someone around they need to know how to like play the part yeah you know and play that little like all right like uh you know, like, especially, like, I think that, like, if you're bringing a girl to a studio, she's not, she's probably not going to be talking a whole lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless there's other people there that she can talk to and stuff like that. Like, yes, of course, introduce her to people and, like, make it a very, like, familial, you know, communal kind of, like, energy and, mm-hmm. like, space and stuff like that. But, you know, I've definitely, I've had my fair share of bringing the wrong person to certain environments. And I'm like, damn, dude, this almost cost me, like, you know, a few, a few relationships. Yeah. You feel me? Because they're like, wow, like, why, why would you bring this person? Yeah, I mean, most of the time it's better to do stuff by yourself, anyways, and then it's yeah. like tell them after or whatever. But 
Um, what's your what's your point of view on like relationships, like modern day relationships? Like, dude, I think the dating scene's like it's fucked. Here's here's the thing, <laughs> and I'm and I'm gonna say this to make sure I don't sound like someone who's like super salty. I right, hear you, but like, dude, the dating the dating pool is garbage. But I feel like you know, like socially, people are much better. You know, like especially coming out of COVID and stuff like that. You know. You know, a lot of people's social skills were super dull, yeah. including my own. And it took me a while to be like, all right, I got to dial, like, not dial in, but, like, find out who I am again. Mm-hmm. And, like, formulate just who you are as a person, what your opinions are, how you act, this and the other thing. Because when you're around other people, you can't let other people make you jaded from who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is very easy, especially when you're around a lot of, like, quote, unquote, influential people. You can't let those people take, you know, You got to be your yourself. Person exactly yeah you know what i'm saying so establishing who you are yourself and like loving yourself and stuff yeah, that's super important but when it comes to like relationships and stuff it's like yeah dating you're talking about dating yeah okay. like yeah when it comes down to dating it's just it's such a catch-22 you know and i've had you know my few like uh you know i just feel like i've been in so many situationships especially within the past like year and a half Mm -hmm. you know i've been in like probably like three situationships where i'm like dude like we were like this close to dating and then it just like didn't work out you know um you know and there's so many things that like go into it and stuff like that but at the end of the day it's just like you know i don't know at least right now where I am in my life, it doesn't make sense to date because mm-hmm. I don't have that like time and energy to be putting into a relationship. Yeah, and money. I mean, I feel like, you know, females nowadays, they expect some type of... Dude, girls are so something. expensive, So bro. expensive. I can't... I don't know how my buddies that have girlfriends and like, like, are just dating like at our age are able to like save money. I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I mean, it, I mean, it's not, not that like they, they like, you know, expect you to pay. Like, you're almost like, you want to do it. You want to do it. And mm-hmm. obviously, like, things are expensive. Like, going to dinner is expensive. Like, um, I feel like you have to solidify yourself first before you actually jump into a relationship nowadays. And, and there's so many options. There's so many options. Mm-hmm. Like, like I could start dating a girl and then I like, go to Instagram or, or some type of whatever, YouTube, whatever. And there's always going to be a hotter girl. There's always going to be a hotter girl. Yeah. And that's, like, the problem nowadays. And, and, like, the whole, like, old school, you know, all that, you know, picking up girl. Like, like it's just, like, out the window. Like, oh, yeah. you like, here she just walk in a car like it's like yeah. it's just different like i don't know i just i feel like and especially like marriage is different too like a lot of people like like there's a, like 50 percent of marriages are divorced like it's mm-hmm. like well divorce rates are super high and not as many people are getting married because they realize the huge financial burden it is yeah you know like um you know when it comes to you know actually you know let's backtrack it a little bit when it comes to like how expensive it is to be in a relationship right it's like it's almost like online, everybody is filthy rich. Mm-hmm. And obviously, that is not how everything yeah. is. You know what I'm saying? Everybody posts up at fancy dinners. Everyone posts up, oh, I'm here. I'm doing this, doing that. Dude, there's no way all of us could be rich at the same time. There's no shot. Being, being so real, there's no way everyone's filthy rich. It's, it's you know, there's definitely holes in it. And I see the little holes. Like, I've talked to, you know, uh, like models and stuff like that. It's like, most models I know are not very wealthy at all. Yeah, they don't get paid much anyways. No, they, they don't get too. paid a lot. You know what I'm saying? But they get, you know, free free, uh, free uh, boots at the club, you know, free tables. You know what I'm saying? Free cover fee and stuff like that. So it's like at least online you're able to make it at least portray like you're living this kind of lifestyle when that's not exactly how it is. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, for example, one of the girls I was talking to, the, where I messed up, was the f- the first date we had i took her out to a really really nice restaurant and that she thinks that's the standard off and th- yeah and now that's the standard you know what i'm saying like you can't start off like that because that becomes like the you know i remember like you know we would be hanging out and stuff like that and we're like all right like we're hungry she's like oh let's go to uh you know let's go to let's go to capital grill you know what i'm saying or like you know and i'm like dude like can we just get like a pizza? Can we just slide <laughs> to like 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 I'm just like, like I would do the same thing. I would go let's go to Pie Bowls. Like I don't care. Let's go to something that's not like too like above and beyond. Like, yeah, like at the end of the day, like no matter how much money we have at our age, it's like we're still young. You know what I'm saying? There's still especially in the creative space, you don't know how long, you know, things last. You know, it's not like you're a fireman where you go you know you're gonna be in here for twenty years and you, you have pension, pension and yeah. this and the other thing, and you have a you know, a four hundred one K already built into your pay and stuff like that. It's like you need to be much wiser with your money. And at the end of the day, dude, when I found myself in these situationships, dude, I was spending like thousands of dollars a month, you know? And you don't realize it either because you're just having fun. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, and like, and I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's my girl. Like, uh, hey, bro. If, yeah. If we're going out to eat, bro, you're not paying. Yeah. You know, if we're in, or like, let's say it's you and me, and we're with a group of people, and we're taking an Uber or something like that, I'll pay for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be that person, but at the end of the day, that's just not smart on my end as someone who's 22 and doesn't have uh, a house yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm 22 with no house. Yeah. You feel me? And like, you know what I'm saying? That just goes into everything else where it's like, realistically, dating is just super expensive. Yeah, and then even like dating apps, like in like, like like a guy can can you know post himself on like whatever Bumble or whatever, whatever I don't know Tinder. Um, I don't use that shit. I don't even know. But um, you can post yourself on online and like you know maybe like within like a week you get like maybe like ten chicks or into you whatever. A girl can put herself on Tinder and get like a thousand dudes in a week, and she thinks yeah. she's hot shit because the app you know makes it seem like she is, yeah. but. In reality, like, what does she have to bring to the table? Mm-hmm. A lot of the girls have nothing to bring to the table, and that's like the that's the issue. And and they try to make it online. It seems like they're like all this hot shit, whatever. In real life, they like don't have anything going, yeah. and it's hard to like find and like it like waste time sometimes because you you think this girl's all that, and and then you finally meet them, and it's like I don't even know why I waste my time. It's crazy, but I mean, it's just it's sad. Like nowadays, like you can portray yourself however you want online. I think that everyone you know compares. I mean, everyone like thinks you know social media is real life so mm-hmm. and that's like the issue that's the whole thing like that's like we're you know dating stars like everyone's doing the dating apps and whatnot and i feel like it's all like it's all just like i don't know it's not it's not how it used to be it's not no. and i feel like i mean it may it may go back eventually i don't know i highly doubt it'll go back to where like how it used to be but i don't know our society is like a hookup society now and it's kind of mm-hmm. just like it's not much like actual like love nowadays yeah. but i don't know i mean that that's like a whole another you know I think maintaining your privacy is something you can do that'll definitely help a lot. Yeah. Like. And focus yeah. on yourself, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, focusing on yourself, but just valuing your privacy over everything. Like, very rarely, like, unless I'm doing, like, some cool shit where I'm like, all right, where, like, like, not that I'm necessarily only trying to flex, but, like, you know what I'm saying? Let people know, like, all right, you know, like, we still got motion. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, we're still here. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't like posting about my life that often. Like, yeah. very rarely do, like, even on my Instagram, I don't even show my face. Yeah, you know, no, like, you don't post at all, like, your face at all. Like, you never really do. I mean, it'd be, like, the corner of your eye or something. It'd be, like, the yeah, <laughs> yeah it'd, be, it'd be a little sly <laughs> fit pic or something or like, like that. Or, like, the restaurant you're eating at or something. Yeah, but it's it's never, like, I don't know. I feel like giving people the opportunity to view your life is is much, much to it is in your hands. And, you know, you need to respect yourself, you know, especially when, you know, if you're talking to someone and you're dating someone or something like that, it's, like, you don't want to make your relationship all about, all right, let's post about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, if we go right? here, let's post about it. This, that, let's post like, about let's it. Like, let's just keep it eat, private. Like, mm. yeah, like, I think that that's that's a huge thing nowadays, too. Like, it's like, we're on vacation, we got to post it. Like, yeah. do you really have to? Like, no. like, you can put your phone away for two days and, like, just chill, bro. Like, I feel like it's more meaningful to, like, you know, like, just be in the moment. Like, you don't have to share everything. And a lot of people just share too much stuff nowadays, too. Like, oh, they yeah. share everything. And, like, I think we touched on that, obviously, earlier, but it's like, like be just be private like sometimes it, it's honestly better and like if you have a proper relationship and stuff it's it's more meaningful it's more meaningful in that in that sense yeah at the end of the day if you're happy in real life doesn't matter what's going on online yeah you know i know a ton of couples who are very big posting online stuff like that dude i know she's cheating on them oh it's terrible you know what i'm saying <laughs> like and and that's like everywhere and I'm, obviously i'm not saying like every single couple who posts about the relationship is like cheating or anything like that but i know that like the more people post online to try and make it seem like the relationship is thriving and well it's most likely not yeah you know there's always you know things behind the camera that are like you know she's you know he's he's complaining about this and she's complaining about this and he does this thing that like she doesn't know about or like you know what i'm saying like there's always little things uh but when it comes to actually getting into like a relationship of your own it's like you know everyone gets nerfed somehow you know what i'm saying i'm very self-aware and like I'm a very picky person, and I'm very honest, and I have no filter sometimes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're also and, like mean sometimes, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like honestly, like, I'm kind of, I'm just kind of a dickhead sometimes. <laughs> like I really am. So it's a treat. That's why. Yeah, and you know, and the and that's the product of me working so much. You know what I'm saying? I'm around people all the time where I need to be straightforward and I need to be honest and need to be to the point. You know what I'm saying? It's very difficult for me to make that transition from this all the time to, all right, now I'm with a girl where it's like, you know, you need to be much more delicate and you need to be much more conscious of people's feelings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like me being able to make that switch has always been really difficult for me. So, hey, 
I know that's a huge nerf for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not always the most affectionate. I'm not always going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, some girls, they, they really want their guy to post them all the time. I'm not someone who posts all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's not like, oh, I'm not posting you because I'm talking to other girls. It's I'm not posting you because I don't like people, like, I don't want people to know what's going on in my life. Yeah. You know, like, I value that kind of, like, privacy and stuff like that where it's like, you know. I don't want my I don't want the internet to ever like get in the way of real life because at the end of the day real life is always a million times better what's online. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Wait, do you you live by yourself, right? So, so I live with my brother and he's deployed right now. So yeah. it's it's literally just me and my dog. Is it like do you like it or like do you kind of like it gets kind of lonely sometimes? Like, cause I mean I I live with myself now. It, sometimes yeah. it gets pretty boring and lonely. Like you hear like. You're like white noise sometimes. Maybe <laughs> like oh, yeah. quiet, like, like, and like, quiet. And then you don't talk for like three days. It's like, ah, you gotta like remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah, remember yeah, what yeah. your voice sound like. Yeah. But I mean, do you like it? I I, I kind of like it, but sometimes it's like your pros and cons of it. It's definitely something that is weird to get used to. Yeah. Um. Uh, the The biggest change that I feel like helped me was picking and choosing who I choose to be around and for how long. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I love my friends, right? Like, all my friends that go on party and this and the other thing, I absolutely love my friends and they're an amazing time. Like, I love hanging out with them and stuff like that, but I can't do it too much. Yeah. You know? And that's because when you're alone, your energy, your vibe, your motivation to, to doing what you want to do and, and pursuing what you want to pursue and stuff like that, that's all on you. You need to be able to find your own ways to make yourself happy, your own ways to keep yourself motivated. You know what I'm saying? You need to be able to be more mindful of the things that get you in your zone, where it's like, for me, that's keeping my space completely clean. That's making sure I'm taking my dog out for exercise and stuff like that, because I have a German Shepherd in Black Lab. He needs exercise. You know what I'm saying? Making sure he's on his schedule and stuff like that. So it's like having those small wins throughout the day is what keeps me from feeling like stagnant or lonely or anything like that. Yeah, you gotta keep your mind active. Like you have to keep yourself in, like encouraged. You have to find encouragement. Mm-hmm. Like you have to wake up and like you know, just attack the day and like not think about like oh I have nobody. Like you just have to take the initiative and like like being solo for a long period of time is honestly like the best gift you can receive mm-hmm. because you can find your peace. You can find out what you like, what you don't like. You can talk to your not only talk to yourself, but you can kind of like realize like you can kind of like find yourself in yeah. a sense because you know obviously you have to take out you have to you know be responsible for like the laundry the dishes all this stuff no one's going to do it for you you exactly. have to do it for yourself and like if you can't do something for yourself you, like how are you gonna you know you can't do anything for anyone else you know what i'm saying like exactly. you can't you can't like provide you can't you have to it starts from the ground up you get to you know take take advantage of you know your own space and like you said like being around your friends so much like you need a break like oh, like yeah. I, I mean you can hang out for like a whole day I need to, I need to be by myself yeah, for like, yeah. for like the night. Like, exactly. but like, that's just, that's just how it is. I feel like now I kind of realize how adults operate now. Mm. Like they need, like people like to be homebodies now, like more than like go out. Like when they're older, as they get older, they like to like, you know, go home and like chill, like be by themselves and kind of like recollect themselves. Cause sometimes it's overstimulating to be around people a lot. Like, oh, yeah. like it was, it was, it's cool. Like, like when you live with your family, it's a little bit different, obviously, cause you've been with them your whole life. But like, you know, having a roommate, like, could you even picture yourself having a roommate? Or, or no no because you have your own space you like it like it's cool and then you could also like think and brainstorm like vibe and blast some music and do stuff like you want to do like and it's cool but in a sense like it does get kind of boring sometimes and, and lonely but um it's cool i mean it, it's an experience it definitely is an experience and it obviously won't last forever but um i think it's, you def- it's definitely something that you know everyone needs to experience at least once yes. in their life yeah you know when you're able to get yourself to a point where you're not reliant on other people for you know, energy or attention or anything like that, when you're able to give all of that to yourself by yourself, you're not as reliant on other people, which like, I know we're, we were just talking about relationships and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, you're going to be trying to dive into a relationship very, very quickly. Once you find someone who gives you something that, you know, you're lacking with yep. yourself, either knowingly or subconsciously. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's helped me be like, okay with like, all right, this thing didn't work out and that's fine. You know what I'm saying? And not dwell on it for fucking months. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And not yeah. like feel like, oh, it's like it's a huge breakup and like, oh, I made this big loss or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. like, nah, dude, I'm chilling regardless. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, they're almost scared to be by themselves and like they're scared to be sim- single and they're scared to be like, like, I don't know, independent. And it, it's, it's honestly like, it's like awakening. It's cool. It's an awakening. Like, oh, yeah. 
I actually like I love it and I obviously like I said like it gets it there's pros and cons to it but like it makes you realize like how important it is to take care of yourself like people a lot of people just like drown themselves with alcohol or drown themselves with like friends and you know they're not thinking about like like what actually is affecting them and like like taking advantage of their life and stuff and like when you live by yourself you're like full-blown like focus on yourself and that's the best yeah. thing like you should be focused on yourself like a lot of people like when they're younger they they think like you know oh i'm young i gotta i gotta make you know i gotta do this and that like while i'm young i gotta go out and do this like no like you need to step back live by yourself like try to i mean not everyone yeah, can yeah yeah yeah, yeah but like um you know just like focus on yourself and and you know build yourself improve yourself and you know improve your mental like a lot of people are just like they'll break so easily and like get frustrated so easily like you just need to find some encouragement and ride with it like and exactly. and then like you bring it to every day and people can see it. like you see like you're always gonna cut you always gonna haircut you always get you always got a smile on your face you like your body looks good like you're eating right like you know you can you're 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 vocal like like everything is just like it's awesome like you finally like you reach that point and you're like all right like i'm like presentable now like it's cool yeah. like and it, it just comes on with live by yourself that's that's like a huge thing like i really like doing that and obviously like i've only it's only been like five months since i live with myself but like you've lived by yourself for like two years i feel like now like you yeah in a yeah, while very often because even when my brother wasn't deployed it was like he was always traveling for work so he would be away for like probably like you know two weeks at a time he would be away you know what i'm saying so it's like for those two weeks uh I would have, I would be working, you know, full time. I would still, uh, still in college. And also like, believe it or not, like my dog is a huge, like takes up a lot of time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause he needs to, to it's have a exercise. Child. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's honest. It almost feels like it's more than having a child yeah. sometimes because it's like the amount of exercise he needs and stuff like that. And that attention he wants, like you've met my dog. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Dude, he needs a lot. a lot of attention. Uh, you know, so it was like building that stamina of waking up at seven thirty, being in the class by eight you know, having class until noon and then going to work until 10 and then getting home, you know, doing homework. And then, you know, most days I'm taking my dog out to the park for the second time of the day at like one thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And That's I haven't, and I haven't even showered yet. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, being able to, to give yourself that kind of, you know, growth is, is super huge, especially when it, you know, when you're even considering, you know what I'm saying? Like getting into any sort of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that'll come out eventually. Yeah, it'll, it'll always come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like um, it's part of the journey. Yeah, we're we're like I think we're like an hour, we're like an hour and twenty in. I think we're in, we're pretty deep. We're pretty deep. Pretty deep. We're pretty call deep. It? I mean, what else? Are you, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, pretty I, good. I mean, I, I feel I like definitely we, got it off my chest. We tossed on pretty much everything in life, but yeah, we're straight. Yeah, episode two. My buddy Giovanni, appreciate you take coming out Thank today, you for bro. Having me, dude. I'll yeah. see you guys soon.